brand new camera workshop vlog number 19 and let's jump in. What's happening everyone? Welcome back to the workshop. Now it's June 23rd, this is workshop vlog number 19 and these vlogs are just my way of checking in with you guys, see how everybody is doing, give you some updates, answer some questions and just general bits and pieces about the channel, just a little bit of housekeeping and like I said check in with you guys and see how you're doing. So that's always where I like to start my vlogs is ask the question how are you all doing, I hope you're all still getting through this pandemic all right and that you and your loved ones are safe wherever you are and that things for everybody are starting to open up so I hope that's the same for you guys too and everybody's doing well and getting back on their feet and the timber prices are starting to come down a small bit I think although everything else has gone through the roof I know in my uh, day job as an electrician the price of raw materials and materials has just skyrocketed and it seems to be across the board but timber prices have come come down a small bit I believe so hopefully there's light at the end of the tunnel in that sense too. Now a few channel updates a few questions to answer and I have some new camera equipment so maybe we might start there. Okay, so I've invested in some new camera equipment and it's a little bit of an investment. Uh, camera gear is quite expensive, but I wanted to kind of uh, up the video quality and up the quality of my videos overall and get you guys some better images of what it is I'm working on because my existing camera is kind of an entry level camera and it's getting a little bit dated now. So I've invested in a Canon EOS R which is was the flagship mirrorless camera for Canon back in 2018. Now they have the R5 which is out now but that's kind of a bit out of my budget but this is a major upgrade over the Canon 800D that I had or the T7i I believe it's called in the States. It's basically the Rebel series in the States. And uh, yeah, now I haven't got the grips of this camera yet. I'm still learning. So um, there's a lot of uh, options and stuff on it that wasn't on my old camera. So I have to get the grips of all that. I kind of have it set to auto at the minute. So it's auto color and, and an exposure and ISO and all that kind of stuff. So I have to relearn this camera, but it's not too dissimilar. So if there's a few setting issues in this video, just understand it's the new camera. And I have my uh, existing camera set up right beside me here. So if I switch to my old camera, you can see on the exact same settings what the image on this camera looks like. And then if I switch back to my new camera, you can see, so you can already see that the image is a lot wider because this one is a full frame camera as opposed to my older one, which had a cropped sensor in it. So uh, even though this lens over on this side is a wider angle than this lens you can still see that this image is wider and that's what I really really wanted I wanted a full frame sensor and uh, I want to get a different lens for the new camera as well so hopefully you guys can see a difference in the image quality again I haven't got the color settings and, and the exposure settings right for the new camera yet I kind of had that dialed in as best I could on the old camera but I'm just kind of flipping back and forth between the two images now to the two, the two videos hopefully I have them synced correctly and uh, yeah, hopefully you guys can see the difference and hopefully it is a big improvement because it's a significant investment and I, I want to make better quality videos going forward. So there you go, that's just the two cameras I have. That's my old camera and this is my new camera. Okay, so we are permanently switched over to my new camera. And like I say, I haven't got the settings 100% down yet. So if the color or the brightness is slightly off, I'm still figuring this camera out. But hopefully you can actually notice an improvement in detail and image quality and all that good stuff. <laughs> Fingers crossed because it's quite a bit more expensive than the old one. And if there isn't a significant uh, improvement, then uh, yeah. This is my very first time using it. And uh, this video is kind of an experiment uh, in testing out this camera. And I'm gonna share that experiment with you guys uh, like I share everything else that I'm doing in this workshop so yeah on to the new camera now I've also kind of gotten rid of the intro so I didn't have the intro in my last video nobody seemed to notice that the intro was taken out or nobody actually commented that the intro was missing so maybe I might leave it out I'm, I'm playing with the idea of not bothering with an intro anymore I don't really know if it's needed uh, let me know if you what you guys think should I make a new intro should I keep the old intro should I just get rid of it is it annoying uh, is there any point in having it do you guys feel it's better without the intro? Uh, let me know. It's only a couple of seconds long anyway, so and it's easy, leave it out. So yeah, that's kind of a few questions I had. Now on to the next thing. Okay, so just address a few questions, some that came up on previous videos and another one that's coming up more and more in all my videos. I see it in the comment section now and that's about the ads in the videos. So you, some of you guys are under the impression that I get to set the ads or how many ads or the type of ads. I don't, that's completely out of my control. All I can set is skippable or non-skippable and I leave the ads on my channel skippable so you guys can skip them, you don't have to watch them. 
uh, the amount of ads that are in the video and the type of ads you see, that's all controlled by YouTube and the ads you see are completely unique to you. So it's completely out of my hands. And I've noticed myself, the amount of ads in videos that I watch on YouTube now is increasing all the time. I think YouTube are trying to push people towards the premium membership without actually saying that. But like I say, it's not actually me. I'm not sitting there sticking in loads of ads in the video. I don't control that. No creator does. Like all we can do is set mid-roll, end-roll ads, uh, skippable non-skippable or bumper ads or no bumper ads but the type frequency that's completely out of our control and YouTube have just recently updated their terms of service and in the latest terms of service they reserve to um, monetize any content they wish so even if I make a video and I don't want to monetize it if I set it to no ads YouTube now have the right to stick in ads anyway and they will still monetize that video so it's completely out of the creator's control so that's the situation going Guys, I'm not setting the ads or the amount of ads. I can only set them to skippable or non-skippable. I only get paid if the ad is viewed. So if you skip the ad, the creator doesn't make any money and it's about 0.01 cent per ad view of which YouTube takes 45%. So you can see there's uh, practically little or nothing in ad revenue unless you have a big channel. And I've factored it in before. I kind of did some rough back of the envelope calculations to make kind of the average industrial wage if you went full-time on YouTube you would need a minimum of about 500,000 views a month just to make a basic wage um, so that's kind of gives you some idea of the type of views you require and how uh, small the ad revenue actually is so most creators cannot survive without sponsorship or without patreon so uh, things like that and if they sell the things they make if they have a maker channel like mine that's how they make their living so the ad revenue only makes up probably one fifth of their income now i have a full-time job i have my own business as an electrician so i'm not dependent on the ad revenue but it is a nice little uh, extra bonus every month to bring in some revenue from my channel and my hobby is paying for itself so I'm not complaining on that end of things I just wanted to um do a quick little question answer question thing about the amount of ads in the video it's not me I can't set them and now I haven't even got the ability to not have ads run on my videos that's been completely taken out of the creator's hands as well so hopefully that kind of allays some of your concerns and hopefully some of you guys who've been asking that question will see this segment in this video now and know that it's not me sticking in loads of ads in the video it's completely out of my control and that's yeah, that's just how it works I can do a full video on behind the scenes on YouTube if you guys are curious I can take you through all that uh, there's no problem there let me know if that's something you guys want to see if any of you guys are thinking about starting your own YouTube channel if that's a video that would help you out I can also do that so hope that answers that question I'm not sticking in all the ads that's YouTube so there we go okay so answer a couple of questions on some previous videos starting with the tail voice slash wagon voice a few of you guys had a question about the screw here so let me address that question for you now Okay, so some questions that came up with installing this tail voice slash wagon voice. Now, like I said in the video, the kit that I actually used was designed for an l shape um, tail voice. It's not designed to be used like this in a wagon voice. Now, one of the questions you guys are all asking me, is it a reverse tread? Why is it working? Uh, backwards well it's not actually working backwards it's not a reverse tread it's just that the nut is captive so you can see when I'm winding it this way which is normally to tighten the voice this is pulling back now the screw is actually working in the right uh, orientation it's not a reverse tread think of this as a nut and this as a screw and as I'm screwing this in because the screw can't go forwards or backwards the nut has to move so if I'm screwing this screw clockwise which is a uh, forward tread the nut is going to be pulled up the screw so that's what's happening in order to open this voice you have to move the handle in the opposite direction so it's not actually a reverse tread it's just that the screw cannot move the nut here is captive and so that has to go up and down uh, with the voice so you can see I'm unscrewing the screw and this has to move that way. So hopefully that makes sense and answers some of your question. It's just that it wasn't uh, meant for this application, although it works perfectly well. It's just when I'm screwing the screw this way, it's gonna pull the nut this way. And when I'm unscrewing the screw, so you can see it's not reverse tread, the nut then has to move this way. That's all, no big deal. It just works the other way around to most voices, but it's a nice cheap alternative to getting yourself a nice strong wagon slash tail voice.
Okay, another question that keeps popping up is about this miter saw tent. Now, I actually made a video about this, and I've noticed in my last few videos, I've guys are asking, hey, where did you get the tent? It says Halfords on it. Did you get it in Halfords? But it's not actually a miter saw tent. This is an old gazebo that I used to have out on my deck. It got pretty torn up, so I repurposed it and turned it into a tent for the miter saw, and it works absolutely fantastically. It's not 100% effective, but it's a lot more effective than what was here. So I actually have a video on this if you want to check it out. Again, it's just a repurposed old gazebo, and uh, you could make it from anything once you get that kind of canvas or something kind of material, you could actually build a tent around your miter saw. So very cost effective and very simple. That's all it is. It's an old gazebo. It's not actually a genuine miter saw tent. There you go. Okay, so that's kind of it for this workshop vlog. Hopefully that wasn't too long winded. And again, these are just my way of checking in with you guys and seeing how you're all doing. I originally started the workshop vlogs during the pandemic, when the pandemic and the shutdown force started, as just a way of seeing how everybody's doing. So I hope you're all doing well. I hope you're all doing fine and you're getting through this and you're all seeing light at the end of the tunnel and hopefully things are going to start improving by the end of the summer. So fingers crossed in that regard. Now I should just mention the Whiskey Shed channel. So if you guys didn't know, I have another channel called the Whiskey Shed where I do whiskey reviews. And some of you guys have been giving me a hard time lately that there's no whiskey reviews lately. Well, again, it's just a time issue, guys. Uh, I haven't had a chance to do any whiskey reviews. This is the main channel and my day job it takes up all of my time. But don't worry, I have a few new whiskeys. New whiskey reviews will be coming up before the end of the week, so stay tuned for that. And if any of you guys haven't come on over and seen the whiskey review channel or the whiskey share channel, it's always linked in the description of my main channel, this channel. And it's a bit of a laugh, it's a bit of fun. I'm standing here at my workbench, supping whiskey, reviewing the whiskey, telling a few stories and a few jokes and that. Nice short videos. And it's just a little bit of a change of pace, a little bit different from this channel so come on over if you haven't already and for everybody that's already over there don't worry there's some more whiskey reviews coming up so that's it guys i think that's all the information i had for now and again it's just been a good excuse for me to test out my new camera equipment so hopefully uh, the image is a lot better as well and thanks to everybody as always over on patreon who continue to support the channel it's very much appreciated guys and uh, that's kind of it i'm going to get out of here now i shall see you in the next video so we've two reviews some projects some tool tips coming up so stay tuned